Dr. Errol Sweeney, welcome to SABC Sport and I'll spray click FM. Thank you very much. Looking at the Africa Cup of Nations 2015, Dr. Errol Sweeney, may you elaborate, according to you, how did it went so far? How was the performance as far as the refereeing is concerned? Well, that's specifically what I would be looking at um, as far as the games were concerned and who won and who lost is of absolutely no concern to me. Um, not interested, nor have I ever been interested. But the refereeing side, I thought generally was, was quite good. Uh, yes, I know it's, it's amazing, you know, how people will focus on one issue and one, uh, one or two issues and then sort of label the whole tournament as being part of that. In other words, if there's one bad game or one bad decision, then they'll say, oh, it was a terrible tournament. But they forget to look at the other side of it. And uh, just to give you a little perspective, in the, in the World Cup in Rio de Janeiro last year, it, the statistics showed that referees got 95% of the um, decisions correct. Now, we must understand that they're human beings. And soccer and refereeing particularly is... Referees are human, and humans make mistakes, and that's going to happen. That's why inserted in the laws of the game, particularly in Law 5, which deals specifically with referees, it does say, and I quote, in the opinion of the referee, end quote. And it is his opinion at the time, and he can only make a call, uh, a decision on what he sees. What if he made a wrong call, doctor, and he says it's a penalty, whereas it was not a penalty? Where does that leave us as a nation, as a football-loving people? Where does that leave the people of the world? If his opinion is that it is a penalty or it is not a penalty or it is a goal kick or a corner kick or whatever, it is his opinion at the time. Now, sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong. But that's human nature and that's, we're, we're all human and humans make mistakes. Won't you say that when you quote Law 5 that says in the opinion of the referee, that definitely it's overprotecting the referee than the game itself, than the feelings of thousands of people who are watching the game, who are following the game. There should be no rule that will be at the end of the day, review a decision of the referee. Well, that's up to the powers that be uh, in FIFA. And they have decided that, that, that that's the way it should be. And all national associations and the confederations have to follow the FIFA ruling. If they want to change it, then they must change it. I mean, Abraham Lincoln once said, uh, government is uh, of the people, for the people, and by the people, or maybe I'm not getting them quite right, but those were the three things that he said. And FIFA is no different. It's made up of federations or associations, as SAFA is in South Africa, or confederations, which are uh, continental associations, and they make up FIFA. Now, if they don't like the way it is, then they do have the power at their AGM every year to change that. And if they want to change it, then go ahead and change it. Very similar to the judiciary, I suppose, in any country. Judges can only make a decision based on the law that, was, that went through Parliament and was passed by Parliament. And then that then becomes the law of the land. And judges can only make decisions based on that. They can't make up their mind as they go along. Similarly with referees or even federations or uh, associations like SAFA, again I, I say because we're dealing with South Africa, they can't just change the laws of FIFA as they go along. They have to go by what FIFA says. So it's entirely up to FIFA to change those laws. Now, now referees are simply policemen, okay? Some, some say they are uh, judge, jury and executioner. Perhaps, perhaps they are in ways, but they make a decision and then that goes to the National Association or the Referee Review Committee or whatever it is to change that decision or overturn it or water it down. But on the day, the referee makes a decision based in his opinion of what he sees or his assistants who are there to help him. Let's talk about the draw of... Uh the uh, of of teams in one group we have seen that in the africa cup of nations uh, where equatorial guinea and mali were equal in points more especially when they were supposed to advance to the next stage and uh, kev committee had to sit down and draw one team what do you make of that rule and uh, would you say that it is fair for the fate of a team to be decided uh, in a, a, a in a boardroom well, unfortunately, there has to be a winner and a loser in every situation. <clears throat> Just
to progress, for one team to progress to the next round. It's not a very satisfactory way. There is provision, and, and I'm, I'm open to correction on this, that an additional period of extra time can be played. In other words, you played 15 minutes each way, which is 30 minutes. As far, I, I'm, and I'm open to correction, there is a provision where they could play an additional 15 minutes each way before going to penalties. But then, you know, the argument against that is that you're going to get a team losing uh, because of their tiredness and they've made a mistake. I, I, I don't know what the best way is. <clears throat> Likewise with penalty kicks. I mean, in theory, you could go on all day today and tomorrow and all of next week if teams kept scoring the same number of goals or missing the same number of goals. What is the, what is the, what is the most satisfactory way? I don't know. Uh, and, and I can't really give you an answer for, to that. The only decisive way, the only decisive way to bring something to a conclusion is to draw lots or to toss a coin. But as I said earlier, uh, playing, uh, using penalty kicks as a means to decide a game, you know, in theory, you could go on for the next week with that. So it's, it's not very nice, uh, and there, there is precedent for it. I mean, it has happened in the past. Um, each... Um, uh, each confederation <clears throat> can decide which way they want to, um, so sort of, if you like, end the game. Uh, the only criticism I saw was that they waited until the next day to draw the lots, when it would have been more, I think, it would have been easier on everybody if they had drawn lots there and then. I don't know why they waited for the next day. Only the CAF committee that decided that can answer that. But then it leaves one question that um, I don't know if you watched the game of uh, the Equatorial Guinea and uh, Tunisia, where Equatorial Guinea had to advance to the to to the semi-final uh, of the Africa Cup of Nations. There's there's a referee who's called um, Mr. Trapassad, uh, who's from Mauritius. His decisions were so dubious in a way that he was suspended in the competition from the competition itself. That raises a question that uh, if definitely. CAF has got always incidents that where referees are being sent home, uh, where referees are not so consistent. What, what, what are the measures that need to be taken by CAF to make referees to understand the importance of being a middleman? Well, uh, that young man was sent home. Um, I have yet to see any evidence <clears throat> to show or give reason as to why he was sent home. Um, nobody has come out with it. Uh, people are speculating and guessing that uh, he deliberately gave a penalty to Equatorial Guinea to allow them to advance. Um, all the cynics and uh, conspiracy theorists are saying that uh, he did that uh, to, to give uh, Equatorial Guinea a, a chance to advance further as a reward for them stepping in at the last moment to host the tournament. Uh, when, uh, was it Morocco pulled out, I think? Yes, yes, it was Morocco that pulled yeah, out. Yeah, Morocco pulled out, you know, with very, with little or no time. And, and so they're saying, all the conspiracy theorists are saying that uh, he did that at the behest of somebody, and I don't know, I'm purely speculating like everybody else, to reward, inverted commas, the, the host nation for, for taking on the tournament at the last minute. I don't know. Doctor, why do you say it's speculation? It was live on national TV. It is so evident that the referee, Mr. Trapassad from Mauritius, definitely that was not a penalty, or not even say according to the look of things, but even Stephen Wonder could have seen that, could have picked up that, that it was not a penalty at all. I can only say that soccer politicians, as I call them, will use anybody as a scapegoat to cover themselves. Now, I'm not making an accusation or even an allegation. I'm merely saying that they, they sent this young man home uh, immediately. Um, I don't know what the reason was. They've never said what it was. The speculation that it was this, that, and the other. Nobody has any... Nobody has any um, um, uh, firm information on it. He was sent home, he, uh, suspended for six months, and uh, allegedly taken off the elite list of referees. Now, my questions are many, but most importantly are, why was he sent home? What was the reason? What was the reason for his suspension? 
Why did they remove him from the elite panel of referees? Had they evidence to show or suggest that he was in any way favouring the home team? And the list of questions could go on and on and on. They did fine Equatorial Guinea $5,000 for lack of security. They fined Tunisia $50,000 for their behaviour, which was absolutely disgraceful and despicable towards the referee and towards the decisions that were made. In fact, it is reported, and I have no evidence to this effect, but it was reported in one of the newspapers that the chairman of the Tunisian FA aimed a kick at the referee as he was trying to exit the field. That is absolutely unacceptable, and I hope CAP will have the guts to stand up to this and say that this is not acceptable. Why was the referee banned? I'm still waiting to hear that. The penalty incident, I don't know. I didn't see the game. I just saw very, 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 very bad uh, TV footage on, on YouTube or on the Internet. It's very difficult to see. The only thing I can say in the referee's defense is that he was very close to the incident. And, in fact, he was running from behind the players involved and was probably no more than 10, 15 meters from the incident. He gave the decision. Um, there's nothing that says a penalty cannot be awarded in the first minute or in the last minute of the game. You know, people are saying, oh, we're so close to the end of the game, and oh, he had to give a penalty. Where does it say that a penalty cannot be awarded in the last five seconds of a game or in the first five seconds of a game? Bearing in mind that a penalty kick is no more than a free kick. It's a free kick outside the penalty area. If it's inside the penalty area, it is a penalty kick. So that's the only difference. Yes, it can have a detrimental effect uh, in that a, a goal is generally scored from the penalty kick. However, players today are so good at free kicks outside the penalty area that they're also scoring. So, you know, was it a penalty? Was it not a penalty? It's very, very difficult for me to see. But at the time, and in the opinion of the referee, it was a penalty. And I, in one way, admire him to give a penalty so late in the game, because many other referees wouldn't. But then, the question is, how can CAF eliminate or deter the uh, violence in the stadiums? We have seen uh, the fans of the Canadian team being chased from post to pillar by the fans of Equatorial Guinea after they've seen that their team is losing. What can be the deterrent in this situation, more especially in Africa? Uh, it's very difficult to, to assess that one. I, I did see that particular game where the Ghanaian fans had to come right down onto the, almost onto the pitch to escape um, missiles being thrown at them and, and I presume threats from the Equatorial Guinean fans if you can call them fans, I wouldn't call them fans, I'd call them unruly thugs. Uh, you know, a game of football is a game of football. And you have to go in and accept that there are two teams there to contest a game, and your team is not always going to win. And, you know, it's, it's great to win, and it's easy to, to, to learn to win, but you also have to learn to lose. If your team loses, your team loses. Why are you blaming opposition fans for that? And I hope that CAF will take stern action against the, the perpetrators of this violence. Uh, according to reports, again, some of the Ghanaian fans were injured as they tried to exit the stadium. That is not acceptable in any walk of life. But, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a CAF uh, political decision uh, as to what they'll do with that. I'm just interested in referees. Very much interested in, in referees. But then now when we close this subject today, is there any difference, any distinction between the CAF rules and the, 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 the FIFA rules? In what respect? Let's say we're talking of FIFA World Cup or we're talking in terms of Africa Cup of Nations. Would you say that in terms of FIFA, they were going to apply the law differently or the regulations differently when teams tie in points and goals? Is there any distinction between the two in terms of the rules? Well, the rules are generally the same, but CAF, or FIFA do allow a little bit of um, uh, maneuverability as far as the, 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 the laws uh, the rules of a competition are concerned and CAF does have its own statute it's up on the internet and they do they you know they make decisions according to what suits them uh, where UEFA might make a different one or 
um, you know, the Asian uh, confederation, they might, might, might make slight changes to their rules. But generally, the, the rules of each competition are, are... They called you the hanging judge. We want to thank you for your time, and definitely we meet those times of 1988 when you were still in South Africa officiating games. But let's hope and believe that we'll see you pretty soon in South Africa and also we'll touch base with you as far as the football game is concerned. We want to thank you for your time, uh, Dr. Errol Sweeney. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.